let's continue talking about cohesive and adhesive forces and the strength of intermolecular forces um, by talking about capillary action. Capillary action is, is kind of that magic that, it, or it was magic to me as a kid, that water would flow up a straw or like a thin tube um, against gravity. And that's called capillary action. It's that, that flow up a thin tube. Uh, and we take advantage of this uh, in chemistry to take samples of things that'll be small quantities of it. You just dip a little tube near a liquid and it'll shroop up. And then you can use that to go run a quick uh, sample through a type of instrument that'll give you information about either it's uh, magnetic resonances or maybe it's UV vis spectra, anything like that. Anyway, um, so in this case, as that liquid flows up a tube, <clears throat> you see both cohesive and adhesive forces working together um, to create this. And what's happening is the liquid is being attracted to the tube. And those are the adhesive forces between the liquid and that external compound, the other compound, which is the glass tube in this case. And so because those, those molecules are attracted to it, the, the surface molecules are attracted to that tube. And so that would pull that surface liquid up the tube a bit. Now, the cohesive forces of the liquid are holding the liquid all together. So as those surface molecules are attracted to the tube, the cohesive forces are keeping the liquid particles attracted to each other. And so that pulls them up with those surface particles. So as those surface particles are attracted with adhesive forces, the cohesive forces are basically pushing the liquid up behind it. And so that gets raised and pushed kind of at the same time from these cohesive and adhesive forces working together. And you see that liquid rise up the tube against the force of gravity, which is pretty cool. Now, this is also going to apply with how we observe meniscuses. And so we've been reading volume uh, using graduated cylinders and other instruments. And so we've been using the meniscus to read that volume. And we always read from the bottom. Now, we're usually working with water, um, which has a uh, concave. I always get concave and convex mixed up, but a concave meniscus. And so we read from the bottom of it. But that, that's really a reflection of its cohesive and adhesive forces. So it, because the water creeps up the sides and creates this concave meniscus, it means that the water molecules on the surface of the water are more attracted to the glass tube than, the, than they are to each other in a way that makes the adhesive forces stronger than the cohesive forces. And so you creep up the side. Now, the opposite is true for mercury. Um, the cohesive forces of mercury are extremely strong, especially compared to their adhesive forces to glass, right? And so those cohesive forces will be stronger. And so that there's a stronger pull in to minimize that, that attraction to the glass. So the, the mercury is trying to maximize mercury-mercury attractions and minimize mercury-glass interactions because they're weaker. And so because of that, you get a convex meniscus. So it looks like this. And so you see the little edges pinched down. So if I was gonna read the volume, I'd read it from the top of the meniscus for mercury. 